Hi, my name is Claire, and as the title suggests, I just love to knit. I've just received great news that I have been selected as a test knitter for Joan Ho's brand new summer um, knitwear book. This is her second book. The first book came out a couple of years ago full of cute cable designs that was really cozy, loungy and modern. So when her second book came out and she started pulling out the call out for test knitters, I put my hand up. The design I'm going to be test knitting is a pair of cute little shorts. She hasn't named it yet but the design is really cute. It has a little pocket with a flap on one of the legs and I just can't wait to get started. So the pattern calls for a DK weight yarn with a 22 stitch gauge. She used a cotton yarn which makes sense because it is a pair of pants and it's loungewear. I've never made loungewear before and especially not pants. And I imagine if I use merino wool it will stretch over time and lose its shape. Um, but I don't have any cotton yarn in my stash. And then I remembered I've got this cashmere yarn from a few years ago that my mum bought. I'm not sure where she bought it from, either online or from overseas when she was in China. But it is a lace weight two ply cashmere. It's 100% goat cashmere and it's really really thin in a beige taupey kind of colour. I've tried to knit with it before. I held three strands and started to make this column jumper for my husband. However, it didn't really come out the way I wanted it to. It's pretty cool. The design's cool with the columns, but I... Firstly, my husband never wears anything that I knit. He thinks it's too hot and too itchy. Secondly, this cashmere is really weird. It feels really papery. It feels like some kind of synthetic cotton and it has almost no halo at all. Of course, I haven't washed it. It may soften over time, but it just didn't feel soft and I pretty much gave up on it halfway through. So I thought this may be a good chance to pull it out again and make this cute little loungewear set. Um, hopefully it'll become a little bit softer with a wash, but even if it doesn't, the papery feel maybe will hold its shape. I've cast it on for a swatch. So the four millimeter needles made the gauge just a little bit too loose. It was 21. So I changed it to a 3.75 meter millimeter needle and the gauge was on point. So what I'm doing is holding four strands together of the lace weight. So that makes eight ply, of course. Um, I didn't really have four cones, didn't really want to work on four cones. And I knew that this was three strand. So what I'm doing is pulling the three strands from here along with one of these from a new cone. So I think that'll make it a little bit easier, at least in the beginning, to start this project. I ran into a small issue with the cone straight away. It keeps falling down. Then I put it on my trusty old nitpicks young holder which was wobbly from my last project hopefully it'll hold let's see so the next step in making the pocket t-shirts I have to unfold the brim in half to make the waistband and then later on we're going to insert an eye cord in here as the drawstring um, to fold it up I have to pick up stitches from my cast on edge and then I'm going to fold it and knit it together so I've been doing that for a while and Oof. Picking up stitches. Close. That's how the story goes. Just wanna let you know. No need to sugarcoat it. It's getting old. There's not much to uphold. I'll most likely go go. No need to sugarcoat it. I can't be the one hey, to yeah. oh, oh. That really hurt my fingers. The waistband is finally done. I've done the three needle, not quite three needle bind off, it was stitching together. So you can see a beautiful folded um, bit here. And also I found that I lost a stitch. So when I go back, I have to make sure I catch that one so it doesn't matter down. But otherwise, I'm now ready to move on to the main part of the seat. Oh, I had to take a three day trip to Tasmania with some business friends and what better place to knit than at the airport and on the airplane. 
It was a full flight and I got to sit in the middle of two people. Luckily for me, I had my knitting with me, but this lady to my right had no sense of personal space and our arms were touching almost the whole time. As the plane took off and landed, she also went wee and talked nonsensically throughout the whole trip. This is the part where you say you want me to. I say I love you, then you go under. Our hotel was a beautiful art hotel right by the pier. I was there early, so I got to sit down and enjoy some afternoon sunshine and do a little bit more knitting. Our second hotel was this beautiful eco lodge, and as soon as I opened my bedroom window, it was the sea. Play tricks with my mind like voodoo. Might be a danger to you, but that ain't all new. Ocean all clues. That's how the story goes. Just wanna let you know. No need to sugarcoat. Yeah. It's getting old. There's not much to uphold. I'll most likely go go. No need to sugarcoat. Yeah. I can't be the one. Hey, yeah. 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 I'm back from Tasmania. And I've made so much progress on my pocket shorts for Joan Ho's chest knit. So here it is here. I have finished the right leg and I started on the left leg last night. The hem of these shorts is folded with a little pearl line um, to help it fold over and then seamed. Now I use a crochet method. I don't think that's going to work. But as you can see it's kicking out a little bit too much. So I might go back to the recommendation, which is whip stitch. There's actually a little bit of red here on the hem. This is really annoying. This is actually caused by the label on the yarn ball. Um, it, was, it was a really red label and maybe with time and sun, it just transferred onto the yarn. So I'm really hoping this is going to wash out. Once both legs are finished, I'm going to make a I-cord string to put inside the waistband to pull it tighter. I think this is going to be a really nice and comfortable loungewear piece I'm going to wear around the house a lot. Let me try it on. Yes, I'm trying it on over my shorts because it's incomplete and I don't think you guys want to see too much. So here it is over my shorts. It's fitting pretty well, pretty good. Later that night, I finished the shorts and now it's time for a soak. So last night I have finished my pocket shorts. The shorts are currently on the blocking mat, slowly waiting for it to dry. You can see outside it's a little bit overcast so it may not dry for at least another couple of days. But I can't wait to try it on and see how it turns out. I also uh, made this little drawstring last night. It's a two stitch I-cord and um, so it was pretty quick to knit up but it was definitely um, a little bit painful on my hands to do such a small stitch transferring it, knit to stitch, transfer it back to the left needle. Um, I made it a little bit longer than she recommended because I do want to you know, tie it up into a little bow on my waistband. Um, yeah, so once the pens are dry, I'll be threading this in and trying it on. I made it in the size M. So you start from the top of the waistband. It's about an eight stitch rim. So you do the waistband and then you fold it over, seam it up. Then you start going around and around to do the main part of the body. The back side is shaped with short rows. It's very clever and um, gave the back side a much nicer shape and a lot more stitches than the front. Once the short rows are done, we go around and around and do increases in the center back seam, center front seam. This then gives you the width for the thighs and the main part of the bum. Once that's done, we separate for the two legs. One leg at a time, it's only about eight centimeters before we go back to doing the um, hem again. So the hem, I use the smaller needles, eight stitches, fold it over another eight stitches and seaming it up. I did modify how I seamed the hem compared to Joan's notes. She said to cast off and then do a whip stitch to seam up the hem. I found it to be a little bit too thick 
Um, then I unraveled it and I used a crochet hook and tried to slip stitch it on. But that was also too thick and made the hem kick up a little bit, as you can see in the last video. So then I unpicked it again and I whip stitched it right off the needles without casting off. I think that gave the best result because it sat the most flat and wasn't thick at all. We also put in some markers for the pocket. So after the main body of the shorts are done, I went back and made two pockets. We, the pockets are just little rectangles. You then seam it onto the shorts where the markers are um, using mattress stitch and the invisible hemming stitch, I think she said. It's pretty, I, I've never done that stitch before. I looked it up, it's pretty much just like duplicate stitch. You uh, put the pocket on, match it up to the bottom and do a little, you know, do the little U shapes and um, almost like an invisible duplicate stitch on top. That was pretty easy and fun to do. After the pockets are seamed, we put the pocket flap on. The pocket flap is also folded in half, um, like the hem and the waistband. Joan did recommend to put some snaps onto the pocket. Um, it's, she recommended a hammer ink snap. I don't have any of those snaps on hand, so I haven't done it yet. Um, I don't know if I need it. However, I found um, with the pocket, after I did the little rectangle and cast off, sewed it onto the shorts, it actually um, gapes quite a little bit. It curls on the top and it kind of flops open. The pocket flap is picked up on the exact same line as the top line of the pocket. So I think it's a little bit too close together and making it very bulky right under the pocket flap there. If I were to make a recommendation to Joan, which I am because I'm a test knitter, I would say to move the pocket flap slightly higher. So pick it up one or two rows above that top line of the pocket. So there is a little bit of room and um, it won't be as bulky. Also, when casting off the top line of the pocket, I will say definitely make it a little bit tighter so it doesn't gape open, or even doing a little bit of ribbing so it cinches in the top line of the pocket there. Overall, it was a very quick and fun project to make. Um, I actually found I really enjoyed this yarn, so I can't wait for it to dry and try it on. Now, unfortunately, the red marks on the yarn did not wash out. It was dye transfer because the red label um, transferred its color onto the yarn, which is a very silly thing to happen. Um, but I couldn't get wash it out last night after soaking it for half an hour, which is a shame. Um, but you know, it's lounge pants I'll mainly be wearing at home, so oh well. The shorts are finally dry. So I've got my trusted little eye cord, I put it on a safety pin and I threaded it through the waistband, and that marks the last bit of the shorts to finish. So I've still got heaps of yarn left after doing the pocket shorts, heaps of these. So I'm going to make another top to go with it. So um, I have a full set to lounge around the house now that I'm not working for a little bit. And you'll find out what it is soon. By the way, I'm wearing the Divana top by Marjena Kolacek. She is a Polish designer who currently lives in Australia. She's only been designing for a couple of years, but her, all her designs are beautiful, romantic, highly technical and just a pleasure to knit. So this the Divana top, it's recently been published in Lal magazine in the newest edition, which I will link below. Um, it is made with Knitting for Olive silk and it's just really lightweight, easy, th easy to throw on and I just love wearing it. So make sure you check out Majana and her designs. think it's painful but really I'm grateful. Okay, so I've been working on my framework bralette in the matching cashmere to my pocket shorts. Um, it's going along pretty well. I've done a shorter ribbing compared to my previous framework. It is a negative ease so it looks tiny but I've measured it against my Wandering Flock um, framework bralette and it's the same size. So that should be fine. Um, what I am doing now though is changing my needles over. I've been using these carbon fiber ones I got online and they are just awful. Terrible. Terribly. Truly awful. Every time I try and move the stitches along it kind of sticks 
and then my hand feels warm. It's like this friction is causing a lot of heat on the carbon fiber. Just me holding onto this, it's feeling really hot on my hands. What an awful design. And I have this um, in all the sizes. I have them in the shorties as well. I don't know why I bought them more. Oh, I mean they color coded for sizing, which is pretty helpful. I wish more needles did that. And I bought the shorties thinking it'll be useful to use for sock knitting, knitting or sleeve knitting. But no, I don't use those shorties either um, because the needles are too short. And I like to use a bit of levering using the whole needle. And when you don't have that leverage, it really, really hurts the hands. Um, I have the shorties in this carbon fiber set, and I have the shorties in the Chiagu set, which was 200 bucks. So expensive, and I never use it. What a shame. Maybe I can sell online. Do people sell used knitting needles online? Another thing I really need to do right now is swapping out all of these Coco Knits stitch holders for non-removable ones. These, because I'm using four strands of this very light lace weight, it keeps getting caught on these little loopy things. And it's just frustrating me. So I'm gonna swap them all out for these. These are marking all the slip stitches in the middle of the framework. And, and I also really need to focus on knitting this properly because the framework bralette is um, inside out. So I'm knitting it on the knit side, but I will be wearing it on the purl side. Again, because it's a four string and it's not twisted, I keep splitting the stitch and missing one of these strands. And on the pearl side, it's really visible. I've already had to go back and pick up stitches so many times. So, firstly, I'm gonna change out these little things that getting the strands are getting caught in. Secondly, I'm really going to focus on making sure these don't get split again. I think I've seen this before. This is the part where you say you want me to I've got half the stitches on a barber cord and not half barber cord. So quick try on because it's looking really tiny. Ah, it's fun. Got quite a bit of negative ease, but I think that's okay because it's gonna be more like loungewear or something I wear at home. Yeah, I think that's fine because I'll just be wearing this at home. Fits over the chest as well. Last night I was knitting in front of the TV and I guess I lost a stitch marker somewhere and I missed a whole bunch of slip stitches in this framework bralette. So this morning I tried to pick it up or redo it with my crochet hook, but it's just looking really loose now because they were stitches rather than slip stitches. So you can see, even though I try to fix it, it's the gauge is all messed up. It's all messed up. Um, it's about three centimeters and I really don't want to rip back and redo it because I'm kind of sick, sick of knitting with this yarn. Um, I guess this will be in the back. Yes, I'll make sure this is in the back so it's not too noticeable. And yesterday also, because I'm so bored with this yarn after knitting the shorts and now the top, and I'm kind of sick of pulling four strands from four combs, I crochet myself a little beach bag. Because <laughs> we're going up to the beach um, next month, in a month, and um, they recommend you bring a little beach bag for the towels and sandy shoes and things like that. So I used my Noro Yukata. I, I've had this ball for ages, just didn't know what to do with it. And I have used part of it to make a cow, um, color a cow, and I still have so much left, even after making this bag. So yeah, a cute little crochet bag that I made less in one day. The straps are a little bit stuffed up. I have to re go back in and redo the straps. But yeah, so easy and simple, even though I don't usually do much crochet, I might do more now because it's so satisfying to be able to make a whole product within one day, even though I have to go back in and fix the straps. But now back to this framework bralette so I can finish the set and finish this video. All done. Now let's have a chat about the pocket shorts and my framework bralette. 
So I've finally finished both of these items. I've got the brand new lounge set made of 100% pure cashmere and just feels so comfortable to wear. It's 31 degrees outside today and it doesn't feel hot at all. And I think that's the beauty with natural fibers because it is insulating. It keeps you cool in summer and warm in winter. So um, I've already talked a little bit about the shorts. Overall, I really, really like it. Um, there are some modifications I would make if I were to make it again. For example, the front crotch has um, a lot of increases, which gives the leg a really nice width. However, there's too much fabric in the front, so it's fold folding forwards towards the crotch. And um, if I were to do it again, I probably won't put this many increases in the front and probably put more in the back to fit my big bum. Um, and personally, I also like high-waisted trousers. So I would make it a little bit higher over the belly button because right now it's sitting on my hips, which isn't too bad, but I do personally feel more comfortable with a high-waist weight trousers. The pockets are really cute. I can put, you know, tissue in I probably wouldn't put my phone in there because it'll drag the pants down off my hips. Um, but yeah, they're very cute little pockets. I still have to go and buy some sew on studs to hold the flaps down because they do come up a little bit. Um, I've already given all my suggestions to Joan. Um, they're just my personal opinion, so it's up to her if she um, takes it or not. Um, but otherwise, as it is, the pattern is very well written and I really enjoyed making it. And now I've also made a matching top, the framework bralette. I made it to match my previous framework bralette that I made with the DK yarn. I thought four strands of this lace weight cashmere will get me the DK. Of course I was wrong again because I never gauge swatch properly. It has a lot more negative ease than I intended. But I think it's still okay. It's a little bit tight, but to wear around at home, it's fine. It's fine. Of course, um, you can see some uneven tension here. I wish I paid more attention to that. But really, by the time I was knitting the top, I kind of had enough of this yarn and I wanted to do something new. So probably rushed through. I probably rushed through a little bit, but you know, that's just me. That's that's just how I knit. I mean, the color is beautiful. It's like this light gray, but it does wash me out quite a bit. So I have to put on lipstick. Otherwise, that looks like a dead person. Um, so if I use this yarn again to make something in the future, I'll probably hold it with a, a different color to either lighten it up or to add a bit more texture with a darker yarn. But there you have it. It's all done. I'm very happy with it. And I have another very cool video planned coming up soon. Make sure you subscribe and like and keep an eye on it. And that's that. I'll hope to see you in the next video. Making me hate you. Probably think it's painful, but really I'm grateful. I think I've seen this before. This is the part where you say you want me to I say I love you then